Well, welcome to the Let's Think Show. Today, I have a special guest. His first name is Greg. Greg, how do you pronounce your last name? <laughs> it's Papa Nicholas Shepard. Uh, I know it's a hard one, but... Uh, <laughs> well, that sounds so easy when you say it. When I look <laughs> yeah. at it, I can't figure it out. Okay, that, that's cool. Well, welcome on the show, Greg. Thank you so much for having me, Shepard. I really appreciate it. So uh, where do you spend your time these days? You're on the East Coast, I understand? Yes, yes. I'm at, right outside of D.C. Uh, in Kensington, Maryland, the, the suburbs of D.C. And uh, lots of activity around here, obviously. But uh, I like this this area where I am because it's, it's quieter. <laughs> the, Good, a little bit out area. of the busy, busy city. <laughs> right. Good. Yeah. Good. Not the kind of guy that really dwells in the city very well, so I try to stay away from it. <laughs> Especially in a place like D.C. where all the good people are, right? <laughs> right, yeah. Get away from that. So yeah. are, are you married? Do you have kids? What's uh, what's your living situation, your life situation? Yeah, so so I've, I've been married, let's see, since t- 2007. Wonderful wife. She's, she's from the area, too, so I met her here, uh, local gal. And then uh, my son is going to be eight soon, so, you know, he's acting 12 but he's eight and looks 11 so i guess we gotta awesome. got figure out some kind of balance there eventually It'll well enjoy out. every moment the kiddos yeah, are, thank you. kiddos are pretty great little critters aren't they yeah they really are thank you so what is your i don't know some people say occupation i like to say yep. what do you do to create value that people are willing to exchange their value with you for so yeah. what, what is it you do yeah. So Shepard, I'm, I'm essentially, when I explain it to people, I'm, I'm a online fitness and nutrition coach and, and I kind of more specialize in the strength area, the strength building area. Um, and generally work with a lot of the, the female population, uh, some male, but, but the female population tends to really want to try their hand at strength and try their hand at, at, at different methods, uh, because, sometimes the methods don't work for certain people and they want to try something new and and guys kind of have their thing going and they don't really veer off much from what I, <laughs> from what I tend to, you know, really work with. But like, I think a lot of the women just want to try something different that um, just something that hasn't worked in the past that they want to just dwell and, 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 and get into and, and really, and really try to, to, change uh just change their bodies um because they really you know for years it would you you were told that uh, it, everything was about slimming down and and looking you know beach ready but a lot of women have changed their tune a little bit so providing that value for the for the women that are kind of really looking to change sort of their their bodies to a different type of physique so is it more um, for like strength and health now than just the uh, looking good naked thing? Or, yeah, or... I, I I think so. Either, but that that factor is still there. I think people still want to look good, you know, on the beach or look good naked. But I mean, right. I, I I think that b- being drawn towards the heavy weights, people start to see a major shift in their their overall health and their mood, mental health too, because a lot of times we we beat ourselves up when we look at our bodies in the mirror. But what the strength training allows you to do is kind of take yourself away from that and really see all the other factors that are contributing to your health and and the things that are happening around you with your with your you know overall strength, and it really puts you in a different mindset because you're looking at something tangible that you're growing with and seeing you know the weight on the bar you know not necessarily what you're seeing in the mirror which is completely subjective depending on the you know how you look at yourself but. I think when you see the major differences and and progress with how much, you know, you can, you can lift or, or how you can change your body dramatically from that, from those methods, women especially start to see a big difference. Not that the guys don't see it. It's just, they have different goals generally, you know, they're looking to do different things. So So what is the stereotypical guy, young man, my age? Well, okay. Middle-aged. What, what's a typical guy's goal that you come across? What, what do we want? What is a stereotypical guy? Do we want to look really tough or do we want to look sexy for the ladies? Or do we want to be able to lift heavy stuff? Do we want to be able to run fast? Do we not want to have heart attacks? Which of those are kind of at the top of what you've noticed in people? You know, especially with the, with the people I work with, the men generally are looking to change their physique. They're looking to, to get beach ready and, and, uh, and shredded, you know, they, they're, they're generally looking for a lot of the, uh, factors that attract women. Like you said, it, it's, that's a big driver. in a lot of it, when you get down to the bare bones and you really ask them, that's where they really want to make those changes because right. that's, they want to, they want to draw the attention to themselves 
you know, whereas, you know, when you, when you talk about women, it's a little bit different. Uh, there's a lot more that they're looking internally to change about themselves, satisfaction with being comfortable in their skin. Whereas guys are more, Hey, you know, I just, I just want a little bit more, <laughs> you know, a little bit more attention, a little bit more, uh, you know, positive interaction from the, from the, from the women. So, right. Right. Well, and you know what I've noticed, I've had this, you know, off and on worked out over the years and I've been fat yeah. now for probably 20 years or so. And, um, I have a, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a really tubby guy. At least I have good self self image though. Uh, but other than thinking that I'm a tub of crap, um, I don't have a motivation now. Like I have at some points in my life to do anything mm -hmm. about it. Do, do you, mm -hmm. what's the deal with a guy like me? Should I just say, well, wait another five or 10 years until I get an urge or, uh, yeah. What, what's the deal with a guy like me? Who doesn't even have the oomph to drop down and try to do a push up. Yeah, you know, the thing is, there, there always has to be some kind of tangible goal there. A lot of people look at, you know, strength as a tangible goal, something they look towards for, uh, you know, maintaining bone density and, and all the important things that we need for health, um, especially long term, because again, we, when you talk about working towards some kind of goal and motivating yourself to work towards it, health is a major driver, being able to play with your kids is a major driver. So there's, there are all those very important factors that, that are contributing, but a lot of people need this external motivation sometimes, and it could be something, you know, along the lines of, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm looking to reach this particular weight goal by this particular time, because by summer 2021, I want to look this way and they right, see right. whoever they, they, they admire and they say, I want to look like this guy, or, you know, they, they have a lot more internal motivation going on because of, you know, wanting to maintain, you know, their relationships with, uh, you know, their, their kids and what, still being able to run around and, uh, and, and be active with them. Cause I mean, that's, that was a major driver for me doing the, the strength training was that I wanted to be smart about it. I didn't want to push so heavy that I would be injuring myself. Cause I've been down that road. I don't want to go down that road. So I, I realized that I had to temper that with a little bit more, you know, pre, pre, you know, prehab, as I call it, just working the, the areas and, and, and not, uh, tightening the muscles and tightening the, the uh, really aching the joints. Um, and it's, it's really important what you do before your, your heavy session and after your heavy session, that's going to dictate your longevity. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Cause yeah. that's something that I haven't worked out with a trainer uh, ever. Mm -hmm. And I heard a friend who does work out with trainers and he was saying, Oh, this one guy's great. He says, it took like four months before I was injured. And that's the longest I've ever gone with any trainer. And I didn't even know <laughs> it was a thing that you, you get injured lifting. Uh, that that's, yeah. gosh, that would seem kind of important not to, not to hurt yourself. Yeah, absolutely. I think the important thing Shepard is when you're, when you're, when you're on a, a program or you're, you're, working with a trainer, they have to see things that normally a lot of people right away couldn't spot. So uh, a movement pattern in your squat or a movement pattern in your shoulders when you're doing an overhead press can dictate sometimes, you know, your. I mean, obviously that's a mobility factor, but a lot of times down the road, if they're seeing things happening in a, on a certain pattern and they say, ah, we need to correct that before X happens because they've seen it so many times and they want to make sure that it's preventative and that that doesn't happen. And when I, when I got hurt, I've had six SI joint back injuries since 1998, all from mostly from football when I was younger. But as I got older, the heavy lifting was really, it was almost like compressing my spine, the more heavy weight I put on my back. And then I discovered yeah. how to decompress the spine and really, um, and when you get off this machine that we have in our gym, it's called a, uh, um, a reverse hyper. When you get off of it, uh, you feel you almost feel taller because the, 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 the spine, it feels like it just kind of stretches a little bit when you get oh, off wow. basically a form of traction. But, uh, right. when you, when you get off of it, you feel, you know, a little bit more loose and like your the weight isn't weighing down on you. And that really helps, you know, long-term, uh, uh, disc, you know, the, the, the disc, issue of, of, of those things, you know, um, th those injuries could be pretty severe when, when they start to really, really get tighter and you feel it because your back is really pumped and it's really, it almost feels like you're, you know, walking with that stiff broom inside of you. But then right. as you start to do these, you know, exercise and you start to do this traction, 
you know, as a coach, you see it, you see these people that go in and they, they train heavy. And then it's what you do, you know, after that heavy lift, how do you take care of yourself? How do you create that longevity, you know, at, at your age and my age to make sure that we're not, you know, trying to, to subtract the years. Like, and, and that's, that's really what I try to do with a lot of the clients is focus on the type of things that we could do outside of the, the strength building that can ensure that you have a long, you know, healthy life with good bone density with, uh, you know, with, with strong muscles, you're going to need right. it, you know? Right. Well, so what about diet and exercise and such uh, is, uh, well, we're talking about exercise. What about the diet part of that? Yeah. Um, I, some years ago, I, I went from 275 down to 215 doing mm-hmm. the protein thingy uh, over mm-hmm. time. Yeah. And every moment, every waking moment, I was miserable and I felt hungry. Yeah. And the only thing I could kind of make myself think was, okay, this pain, this is what it feels like to be getting in better shape. Mm-hmm. So I will try to like it. Kind of neuro-linguistic programming myself to, to like right. being uncomfortable. <laughs> Um, yeah. <laughs> is, does everybody go through that or, or do the people who say, oh, I get to eat whatever I want. I get to have an eighth of an ounce of chocolate every six months. It's wonderful. Anything, you can do anything <laughs> on this diet. Like uh, what's your thought on that? What or your thoughts? Uh, does everybody feel miserable like I do or no? No, you know, I, I, I think to a certain degree, you know, you, you, you go down these, these nutrition paths where people will drive you in a certain direction. They'll say, this is good. This is good. Try this. I think it's completely individualized. I think you have to kind of figure it out for yourself. What really is optimal for you? You know, a lot of people will pick vegan for philosophical reasons. They'll pick carnivore for, for reasons. And, and they really, what, what I've always sort of looked at is eventually people wind up right there in the center with a balance if they're not so married to one way or the other, they, it tends to come right back to the center where yes, you're getting, you know, good vegetables, you're getting, you know, uh, a lot of protein, you're getting all the things, the essentials. And what I always try to say is what will help you, what will help you, uh, uh, especially with your nutrient intake, what will help you for, you know, for health reasons, but what's going to help you perform better too. So when I look at it, I look at, I look at it at a performance-based aspect where you're trying to get as much of the nutrients with every meal, kind of like a bang for your buck. You know, you don't want empty calories because the, the thinking so long ago is if you remember the nineties, it was like, if you wanted to diet, it was white fish, broccoli and, and fruit. Or if you wanted to, if you just needed the calories and the carbs, you would just eat a bunch of carbs, but they weren't necessarily good carbs. Right. So, just pasta you know, overdose. You, yeah. Yeah. So there was that tug of war going on. And then eventually I think it's come back to the to the to the middle where we're starting to see you could still maintain a uh, a physique with you know steak with uh, uh with white rice with with sweet potatoes and things that are packed with all the essentials but also are highly bioavailable. So you're not getting you know, the fake stuff in there, you're not getting, it's not always the, 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 the protein powder that, yeah, it, it's protein, but is it as bioavailable as a steak? Probably not. Right. When you okay. compare the two. So really what I try to do with clients is look at what, what are the micronutrients you're getting? Are you getting enough? Are there deficiencies? And let's try to f- figure out what single ingredient bioavailable foods that are bringing you back to that balanced diet that we've for some reason run away from years ago right. even though it was working you know so uh everybody's got their own philosophy when it comes to what is optimal but i always felt working with all these clients this balance was always most optimal because it it was feeding it was feeding the performance it was feeding the health and and making sure that you weren't deficient in areas and and gave you overall a good balance in your nutrition so that so this nutrition aspect that's something that when with your clients mm-hmm. if if that's an add on that they want or if they, if they want advice on nutrition also that is something that you can help them come up with meal plans and shopping plans and you know what it is they should and shouldn't eat and the good and bad is that accurate? Yeah, absolutely. What's nice is uh, my my fitness app actually has a, a printout when I input all of the uh, uh, foods in it it will it will print out a PDF of your shopping list as well as your breakdown of macronutrients and micronutrients and 
sh sugars and all that kind of stuff that, you know, will, will pretty much organize the whole entire blueprint for you. Um, you know, okay. when you do end up going to the store, you know exactly what to buy, you know how much to buy, you're not wasting anything. And, you know, you're getting everything you need to get out of that meal. So. Okay. Now, yeah. speaking of diet, when I did keto some years yeah. ago, uh, I did a, just a high protein thing and, and lost mm -hmm. the weight. And then I kind of maintained it a while with keto. And a question I have now is I, when I'm eating just high protein meats and such, I, I, I like to poop every day. I don't think I've ever told anybody that before, <laughs> but I like to poop every single day. And when I was doing that, I wasn't. So Metamucil right. seems to be a good thing, but does that right. ruin ketones or like you're supposed to stay below that level? Does, is that considered a bad carb that will ruin the ketones? No, I, I think certain medications and, 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 and things that are a little bit more reactive to that situation probably will help. Um, what I always try to do, especially with someone who, you know, isn't regular when they're on it, is to, to pay attention to your electrolyte intake as well. That's going to dictate a lot of the, uh, the bowel movement, because again, that, a lot of this stuff, you know, when you get on keto, that's, that, that's, that's you know, a natural thing that's going to happen. But if, as long as you're, you know, your electrolyte intake is good, your salt, your potassium, and then of course, paying attention to your fiber, you could still have the greens, you know, they're, they're low carb greens because they're high in fiber. They almost cancel each other out on the keto diet. As long as you're supplementing with something where you could stay regular, whether it's the electrolytes, you know, spinach, whatever you need, dates, some people use dates, but um, will it knock you out of ketosis? It depends because some people are very sensitive to any carb that, that enters their body and they get worried that they're, they're going to break out of ketosis just by having, you know, uh, a half a sweet potato or, or a banana. And what's interesting is a banana is <laughs> like, it, that's like meeting the, the limit right there. One banana meets the limit, right. on keto, which is surprising. Uh, but, you know, as long as you're staying regular through that, the electrolyte intake and, and the, the fiber uh, filled carbohydrates, they'll I think you'll, you'll, you'll find that it'll, it, it's a little bit more comfortable. Your keto experience will probably be a lot better. Uh, but again, it's, it's so individually dependent on how your body handles the carbs that you eat versus some other person that may, that can eat upwards of a hundred and still remain in ketosis. Okay. You know? Okay. Right. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Um, so working out, most of your clients have their a home gym or they take their phone and prop it up at the gym and, and then you watch them work out and tell, I, I've never, I've known nothing about this. How does, how does it work what you do for the, the workout portions? Yeah. So the online experience is, is very different than you would, you know, I mean, obviously the, the in-person experience is very hands-on, but it could still be very hands-on virtually it's just that you have to have the right setup you know and with my app at least the benefit of having it is that you know you have a, a lot of virtual uh, tools that i can just set that camera up speak directly to that person as they're going through the workout we could do a one-to-one -one, or if it's not you know a, a virtual one-to-one -one, uh coaching program that they they want to be on then we i just send videos back and forth with them in the app and they're able to they're able to send me what they do take videos of it their squat their technique and then I can give them provide feedback over video as well so it's always nice to have you know like a you know a, a, a constant communication throughout the process because you you want to feel like you're getting the hands-on experience as a client rather than you know just hearing someone you know on on a on a post or or you know typing just having a response in the in the uh, text message and thinking you know this isn't really coaching but right, right. that's what i wanted to bring to the experience was a, a virtual hands-on experience where they're really they're really engaged with me throughout the process okay and so and you so you have an app that helps yeah. you along with this okay interesting and is this app something that i imagine that it comes along with your packages but do some people use the app that aren't getting training from you also or how does that work yeah, a lot of times what I'll do is if someone, you know, is looking for a series of workouts that, you know, they're, they're, they're injured and they need some, you know, prehab workouts for their, for their workout session they normally do, or, you know, they just, they're a little, they're at a loss as to what they need to do exercise wise. 
I'll invite them on to the the actual app itself, you know, for a very small fee, and they could just per, you know peruse the whole entire library and look at every single workout they want to do. Um, and it's 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 real simple because the what's nice is they have uh, a, a video instructor too there that's on the app telling you how to do a certain move, which eventually I'm going to start recording my own self on these videos so that you don't have to look at the same fantastically handsome uh, blonde guy that's on there. You can look at this mug. <laughs> that's value added right there. I'll tell you. Exactly. You're right. It becomes more my fitness app than it does, you know, another company. So, um, right. but what's nice is that you, companies will run these, these, these fitness apps and you'll create, you know, a lot of the workouts and a lot of the, 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 the nice features that you want to have <clears throat> that you want to have so that it it optimizes the experience for for the client because they want to be able to track they want to be able to keep you know tabs on what they need to do and it also integrates well with a lot of the nutrition apps out there like my fitness pal so it's got everything you need um and in a perfect world we have all this at our fingertips and really we've gotten to the point in fitness where we could pretty much pull up whatever we need to pull up uh, you know, for a 12 week or 16 week experience or a, you know, six month experience. And it's great to have, it's been probably my best investment so far as far okay. as, just, you know, for my clients and, and, and for myself, because I've realized that this online experience has really changed, you know, the game as far as coaching is concerned. And, um, you know, I was lucky enough to, to start sooner than most did before COVID and get, and get right. Rolling, so. Yeah, when the panic hit this spring, I think anybody that was already involved in this the space of, of yeah. remote work mm -hmm. did have a, a head start. And then especially as the months went by and the, the panic and the phobia, whatever you want to call it, as it got worse and yeah. worse, um, uh, now everybody is realizing, oh, um, with the great reset, they want all of us to work from home. So that's what we're all going to have to do. And what, how am I going to do my job from home? And so yeah. I, I'm thrilled that you had that head start on it. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's been the advantage just from a, from a, um, you know, a virtual standpoint, because a lot of people that, you know, had worked with me in person for, for a couple of years, um, you know, they were saying, well, what do I do now? I said, well, good. I'm glad you're still with me because guess what? You know, I, I got this, you know, set up and, um, you know, we can restart and here's how it's going to look different. Here's how it's going to look the same. And, you know, there's a comfort level still when they're able to still see a face on the other side, you know, right. rather than, like I said, just, you know, texting back and forth because you'd be amazed at what virtual coaching or, or online coaching looked like five years ago. You would, you know, talk to them over social media, or uh, you would email them, and you would have a workout uh, sent to you via um, Microsoft Excel, <laughs> <laughs> which, right, is, which is right. not the flashy. <laughs> you know, th that whole personal part of it is, gosh, yeah. that that would be so important. I, I, mm -hmm. Yeah, because there are certain things that would be so easy for you to tell me, well, just do 20 push-ups, uh, you know, three yeah. times throughout the morning. And uh, it's embarrassing for me to say, I can't even do a push up. Well, if you're actually working with me one on one, then yep. you can, without embarrassing me, say, you know, let's try lifting a, your, your can of beer a little bit one time over your head before each sip and, <laughs> you know, kind of work me into it or what. And I'm not sure if that's part of your plan, but uh, <laughs> that, that would be helpful. Um, what about alcohol? What are some of the, the nasties? And I'm kind of going back and forth between uh, the exercise and the diet. Yep. But what are some of the, the worst things for, someone that's trying to get or stay in, in good shape, good health. Yeah. You know, as, as far as the, it's funny you mentioned alcohol, because I was just having this conversation with somebody the other day. I've, I've never been averse to having, you know, just a few, uh, you know, from time to time, even when I'm in the, in the heat of the training. Um, you know, I, what I've noticed is that when, when I, when I drink it and, and this happens a lot with my clients, they get really dehydrated and tired the next day, obviously, I mean, the hangover is a factor anyway, if they drink too much, but if, if, if it's a factor of dehydration, what's going to happen is the, you're going to have low salt in the body. And, and we've come to notice recently that, re, you know, salt is kind of that hidden, you know, performance tool that, that performance, you know, nutrient that we need that mineral. And it's kind of been pushed aside for a while because we used to think salt was bad. You know, we were, mm. we were kind of demonized for a lot of years that, that high salt was, was not good for the body, but now people are starting to see it. I mean, Hey, if you're, 
training heavy and you're sweating, what's the first thing you're losing? Salt. So, you know, when, when you dehydrate like that, all of those electrolytes are, are being dumped out of your body through your sweat. And it's the same thing happens with coffee. Although, you know, as you can probably guess, that's, you know, <laughs> my, my big Achilles heel, <laughs> but um, it's, it's, I, you know, I think just monitoring and making sure that you're not going too overboard or, 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 you know, it has the opposite effect. If you, if you drink too much of it, you know, obviously the, the coffee is another factor too, uh, because if you drink too much of it, the, the adrenal glands get taxed and you're tired all the time. And it, it's going to have the opposite effect that was intended. And, you know, when it comes to the alcohol, I try to, to monitor what I drink, you know, during the course of the week, if it's a couple of glasses of wine or, or, or a bourbon every now and then, I, it wouldn't affect uh, my training to the point where I'd be really concerned. Um, but then again, if I'm, if I'm, you know, spending New Year's and I'm having a few more than normal, well, chances are I'm probably not going to train the next day. I'll wait another day. <laughs> <Okay. know? laughs> right. Yeah. So I'm not a stickler about it. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that is something that I remember body for life. I don't know, yeah. 20, 25 years ago. I don't know how long ago was I did that. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm the only guy that's tried 87 different uh, fitness plans or diets mm -hmm. or whatever. But I remember trying that years ago and I yeah. loved the free day that you can yeah. eat whatever you wanted for a meal or for a day. Yeah. Now with 15, 20, 30 years, whatever it's been, uh, is that a thing or does that ruin your whole week? You know, it, it kind of depends on who you ask. A lot of people are very motivated by a schedule, motivated by a routine. And anytime that routine is broken, right, they veer off and they veer off hard. You know, it's like it, 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 if they're so used to having that Friday you know, beer or, or the, a couple beers. And then, you know, Saturday and Sunday, they have, you know, a few too. And then Monday, or there's supposed to be some kind of light bulb that goes off or click and, and, and Monday is clean eating and you're back to normal. I always found like there's two different people to work with. And it's either the people that are very routine oriented that easily get broken out of that and they have to stay on it all the time. Uh, or it's the people that can actually manage that and reset uh, and handle those cheat days and go right back to training, um, you know, on Monday and, and have that good diet and, and, and exercise. So I think it depends on how, uh, you know, I think it depends on your mode and how, what you're used to in your routine and, and how you get used to it. If certain people can, you know, break out of it and, and be right back where they need to be great. But if you're somebody who, uh, you know, self-sabotages, I wouldn't like, I wouldn't completely recommend it. Right. Right but there still needs to be that psychological break because we're, it's like trying to be absolutely spot on and perfect with everything. You need that time to just go, Oh, let me, let me reflect on, on all the work I've done and kind of maybe reward myself a little bit for right. all the work I put in. Okay. Right. So, and, and so you talking about training, I, I, yeah. I have a gym that's 20 minutes from me that. I, you know, I can go anytime I want, but I, I just, yeah. I don't. And I, I have the same excuse. Probably a lot of people have, well, it's just, it takes too much time to get there. Well, obviously that's not the real thing. Do yeah. you have clients that just work out at home with no real gear other than a uh, jar of milk doing curls or like, how, yeah. can a person Absolutely. get in decent shape that way? Yeah. You know, what, what's interesting is a lot of people that, you know, when, when COVID hit, a lot of people didn't have much of a choice um, because they had gone to gyms, the gyms were shutting down. So their only choice was to go out and buy a few, you know, bands or, or buy a medicine ball, uh, or a balance board or whatever they had. And, you know, I would design a, a complete program just based on a few things that they had in their, in their home and body weight exercises. And I actually had a client, you know, recently who, uh, did a testimonial for me. He was saying, that even when COVID hit and he ha and he was squatting heavy previously, he went, you know, back to his home. The gyms were shut down. He was only doing home workouts, but it was it was the, the, some of the the isometric exercises that I did, where you kind of hold your body in one position for you know however long. He went back and he was able to do more than he did when he left the gym. So there are, there are a ton of things you can do with home workouts that will you know 
maintain the strength curve and you won't lose a lot of that, but also, um, you know, just walks for crying out loud. If you walk, you know, three, three times a day for 10 minutes or do, you know, a couple of 20 minute walks uh, during the course of the week, you will see a dramatic, dramatic change in your body just because it's so good for digestion. It's so good for your, you know, what's called your A1C that kind of measures your blood sugar. And then you don't feel as hungry. So you're, you know, you, you, you don't, and this was my experience during COVID. I was starting to eat bread of all things. And like, I never eat bread, but it was because I had access to it and we weren't going out as much. And I was eating, you know, a couple of pieces of toast and, you know, not really having much of a change in the, in physique because I was walking dogs. I was out and exercising a little bit. And then when the gyms kind of came back, you know, I didn't lose a step. So there's a lot of things you can do. Um, you know, a lot of things you have at your disposal when you're at home, you know, that's kind of a pacifier almost uh, until they, they reopen the gyms. And I tell you, it's going to be one hell of a blitz <laughs> when they do. <laughs> Everybody's going to be rushing. Yeah, we're fortunate in yeah. our area that uh, actually that's where my wife is right now. She's a gym yeah. rat and she's in her exercise class. But I know in some places, California, I believe yeah. um, the bad guys still have all of the businesses locked down. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Uh, yeah, that's that's so unfortunate, especially when somebody has something great to do. I was thinking about that the other day. You know, if, if you're just going out to the bar. Yeah that's bad enough to have somebody have you, you know, force you to be incarcerated in your own home. But if right. you're wanting to go to your AA meeting or go to the gym or yeah. something kind of positive, like that's really yeah. bad. That's that makes it even worse. I think. I know. Uh, I know. Yeah, that's, that's too bad. Well, Greg, what questions have I not asked you that are important uh, that, that you can think of that uh, our audience might be interested in uh, knowing about get better. Well, I tell you, you know, the, 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 a lot of the things that, that I've, uh, you know, understood in the past about training and exercises, you know, they're completely individualized. So if someone, you know, had a lot of questions involving, you know, and confused about what path to go down as far as, you know, nutrition and, uh, you know, exercise, just, you know, inbox me on Facebook. And, and again, a lot of this stuff, I, I mean, I spend hours just talking to people about their experience, uh, just because I want to get to know you know, people and, and build those relationships, but also to, to see, you know, where kind of this, everyone's at, uh, you know, individually where we can, you know, try to tackle this, you know, obesity epidemic and, and really focus on a lot of the things that could be uh, fixed, you know, uh, long-term for people, especially when, you know, this thing is hitting and, and people are falling, falling into, you know, the trap of, oh, hey, I, well, if I'm, you know, not able to do this, I'm not going to do it. It's, there are so many different things, you know, that you could do right now, uh, just as far as, you know, from a standpoint of activity, just walking. I mean, that, that non-exercise, what they call non-exercise, you know, uh, thermogenesis, walking your stairs. I mean, even doing that a couple of times a day, that's still activity. You're counting your steps. You're, you know, you're, you're, you're in the, the positive when you're, you know, able to do a couple of those things throughout the day if you're working. And, and really it's the sedentary lifestyle that's hurting everyone. Um, you know, but when, when I talk to people through the DMs, they're usually uh, just concerned about what this is going to look like down the road if, the, you know, they keep the gym shut down and, and how this is going to look for them, uh, you know, in the future with their health. And I'm thinking just, you know, if, if you're feeling like you need to do something, get out, outside, walk around, you know, do some, you know, body weight stuff. And, and you know, again, they can get on the, the, the app and I got a ton of stuff they can do at home. Um, it's just nice to have those options out there because, you know, if we didn't have, you know, the internet or, or we didn't have all these tools, you know, I can't imagine what people would be going through right now, uh, really struggling. So, um, I think it's nice to, to, to just have that conversation, uh, and, and kind of keep a, kind of keep an ear into the community, just, you know, especially the Liberty community, knowing where everybody's at, uh, mentally and, and trying to help them through this because, there are a lot of people that are having a hard time and, and I, I want to be able to help them in some way. That's, that's wonderful. And by the way, you mentioned Facebook. Is it, is it your first and last name or do you have a business name? What, how, how should people find you? Uh, how should people find you? Yeah. I mean, they can find me at, uh, on Facebook, Greg Papanicholas. Uh, and then uh, I'm also on Instagram. Um, and a lot of times DMs the best. I mean, that's probably the best way to get in touch. I have the website, 
Uh, uh, what can, is DM? I'm not familiar with that term. Oh, direct message. So you could just go in. You could just oh, go Facebook into Facebook Messenger the kind inbox. of thing. Yeah, Facebook okay. Messenger. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, and 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 they can contact me that way. And then of course, Project Sparta Coaching uh, is the website. And a lot of that, you know, there's forms on there that they can fill out if they just want to, you know, have a quick chat uh, over Zoom. And of course, um, you know, I'm I'm trying to to find other platforms that uh, obviously because of what's happening to Facebook. Uh, you know, the mass exodus, I'm, I'm trying out new, uh, uh, you know, uh, different platforms just to see which one works best with, you know, my business. And, you know, I, tr I still treat Facebook like a business. Um, you know, it's basically my business page. Uh, right. Any, any philosophy you hear from me, you heard <laughs> three years ago, <laughs> but doesn't mean I still, you know, don't talk about it, uh, you know, in the DMS or, or talk about another platforms, but uh, you know, God bless the Liberty platforms because we're still able to, you know, chat gosh. on those. But um, things like Float, F L O T E. Yeah, gosh, thank Float. goodness uh, things like that are popping up for people that are not completely brain dead uh, and, and who want to be able to say some things, be they right or wrong. Yeah, thank goodness yeah. for those. And as a matter of fact, I will include in the show notes, um, I will include uh, all your contact information. So uh, feel free to look down below, folks, and uh, you will find that. I have one final question. And yeah. this is something that I've asked a lot of people in a lot of professions and all of the masters refuse. You ask a martial artist, you say, hey, I just want to be a little bit better at defending myself. And I'm willing to put one minute a week into it. And that's all. And then immediately, no, 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 no. You've got to train for at least seven hours a day for 18 years if you want to seriously be able to fight. Well, yeah, I know. But if I'm only willing to do one minute a week or one minute a day, uh, let, let's make it two minutes a day. Hmm. If, if you s could give me that that advice right now, or, or the hmm. listening audience, knowing everybody is, is different, what can I spend two minutes a day doing until I'm ready to, to pull the trigger and get in touch with you and sign up to really change my life for the better? What can I do to putter along? What would be my best bang for the buck two minutes a day? Honestly, I think that high interval training, I mean, if you could go really intense, you know, for, you know, a minute and then a cool down period, you know, for a couple of, you know, maybe 30 seconds there, compounding over a course of a couple of, you know, weeks, if you do a little bit of that each day, you're going to notice the, the the physiological changes just with your your body, but also just with your your hunger, you'll, you'll start to, the, the, the metabolism will just change completely just from fixing a couple of things throughout the day that you do. And like I said, the walking thing is, has just been incredible for people because we've always thought that, you know, running a marathon for 45 minutes was the answer. Uh, but honestly, when, when you're, when you're jogging for steady state cardio for that long, the, the oxygen demand, the, the nutrient demand and everything that you're dumping out of your system for 45 minutes straight is not going to help you. And that's why you see a lot of the people that run all the time, they don't look like the people that are lifting in the gym or doing body weight training or, or, or strength training. Uh, and you see the difference in that because physiologically, those changes are going to be a result of what the, you know, what you're putting in uh, into the, into the workload. So I've always felt like if you could get that quick, you know, hit workout, you can get that, the, the, the walks in, you know, you'll be in a pretty good, you'll be pretty good going forward. I think you'll progress, uh, you know, a little bit quicker, uh, at least in this, you know, situation we're in right now when we, you know, can't get in the gym for, for an hour or two hours, you know? Right. Right. Well, thank you so much for, for joining me today, Greg. I appreciate it. Hopefully, like I think I have learned, um, I still, I know I need a lot more, but hopefully this has also helped other people. Thank you so much for coming on. And, uh, would you be willing to come on the show again sometime? Absolutely, Chef. Would love it. Thank you Wonderful. so much. Well, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you.